Hello, Rayan. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. What did you learn about? I learned about Earth's history and its features. What can you tell me about Earth's history? The living and non-living things on Earth today weren't always around. Earth is ancient. It is very, very, very old. The Earth is older than any of the living and non-living things on it. Life on Earth has grown and changed over time. When Earth first began, there was no life on it at all. There were no lakes, no mountains, no trees, and no people. There wasn't even air for living things to breathe. Earth started out as a hot boiling pool of melted rock. And for a long period of time, Earth began to cool down and rocks began to harden into a hard outer layer known as the Earth's crust. As more time passed, rain began to fall forming oceans. As Earth cooled down even more, air was able to settle around it. Up until this time in Earth's history, there were only non-living things on it. Water, air, and land. What happened next? How did life begin to develop? As water and oxygen came to Earth and the planet cooled, life began to develop. The first life was in the form of bacteria. From this, animals and plants developed in the water. In time, plants and animals moved to land. After a very long time, dinosaurs began to roam. They were around for a really long time, but there still weren't any people. As planetary temperatures and weather changed, so did life on Earth. Species such as the dinosaurs and giant ferns died out, while new species such as saber-toothed tigers, flying mammoths, and even people developed in their place. Very good. Um, what can you tell me about Earth's features? Just like our face had features, like a pointy nose, rounded spiny eyes, and a white flat forehead, the Earth also has features. And just like our features change as we grow, the Earth's features also change over time. The Earth's features are the natural shapes on the Earth's crust, like a puff of rock or water. Man-made features can be like a puff of rock and water too, but they're not natural features of the Earth. Swimming pools, buildings and football fields are all man-made features. Landforms and bodies of water are the natural features on Earth that give the surface its shape. These features can be changed over time by the movement of wind and water. This is known as weathering and erosion. What is weathering? Weathering is when rocks are broken down into smaller pieces by wind and water. Moving air, as well as flowing water from rain or rivers or waterfalls, can break down rock over time by constantly rubbing against it. Weathering can affect both natural and man-made features of Earth. What about tides and currents? They also cause weathering. Yep. And what is erosion? Erosion is when the broken down pieces of rocks are moved by wind and water from one place to another. Together, weathering
spring and erosion change the shape of Earth's features and even create new ones. Very good. What can you tell me about Earth's water features? Water is a natural material found on Earth as salt water in oceans and seas and less fresh water in the lakes, rivers and ponds. Oceans are Earth's largest water feature, covering most of Earth's crust with salt water. Seas are similar to oceans, but smaller in size. Lakes are large bottles of the wing lakes are large bodies of still water surrounded completely by land. Ponds are similar to lakes, only smaller. Rivers are large bodies of flowing water that move in a path under the surface of the earth. There are many other flowing bodies of water similar to rivers, such as brooks, streams, or creeks. Waterfalls are also bodies of flowing water. They are the part of a stream or a river where the water spills suddenly downward. <laughs> okay. And what are landforms? Landforms are the rocky features on Earth that give the surface its shape, such as mountains, such as mountains. What else? <laughs> mountains, pla, such as mountains, plateaus, volcanoes, islands, peninsulas, plains, valleys, canyons, and caves. Very good. And what are mountains? Mountains are enormous rocky landforms that come to a peak or point at the top. They are formed when tectonic plates collide and rise. What are tectonic plates? Tectonic plates are pieces of the Earth's crust. They are constantly moving and shifting very slowly. We can see it, but they are even changing the continents. When Earth first began, there was only one big continent. Now there are seven. And a very long time from now, they will become one big continent again. And what is under the tectonic plates? Magma. What is magma? It is the hard melted rock below the Earth's crust. Is it liquid or solid? Liquid. What about the tectonic plates? Solid. So the solid tectonic plates are sitting on top of? The liquid magma. Is this why they move? Yes. Okay. And... Okay, return to mountains. Where can we find mountains? Mountains exist on every continent and even beneath the ocean. Some of the highest mountains are at the bottom of the sea. Mountains are most likely to be found along the boundaries of tectonic plates. Why? Because this is where the tectonic plates bump into each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> what are plateaus? Plateaus are landforms with high steep sides and a flat top. They can be formed by magma pushing up from beneath or from erosion bearing away mountain tops. <laughs> and what are volcanoes? Volcanoes look like mountains with an opening near the top. They sometimes erupt or let out hot melted rock or lava from inside the earth. Wait, so hot melted 
melted rock is lava or magma? Lava and magma. How? When the hard melted rock is under the earth's crust, it is called magma. But when it comes out, it is called lava. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Mm, what are islands? Islands are parts of the Earth's crust that rise higher than the water surrounding them. They can be formed by volcanoes or can be part of an underwater mountain ring. So, since Bahrain is an island, does this mean that we are sitting on top of a mountain? Yes. Kind of. <laughs> okay. What is a peninsula? Peninsulas are areas of land surrounded by water on almost all sides. And what are plains? Plains are large, wide, open, flat areas of land, means one covered with grass. And what are valleys? Valleys are low areas of land between the mountains or hills. They can be narrow or they can be large enough to build entire cities in them. And what are canyons? Canyons are very deep, narrow cuts or rifts in the land, often caused by rivers and other moving water. Okay. So the river? Cuts through a canyon. canyon. And what are caves? You like caves, right? Mm. Okay. What are caves? Caves are large open spaces or voids in the rock of Earth's crust and are often cold, dark, and wet. They, can, they are hollowed out over time by water or water and acid. Acid? Yes, when rain soaks into the Earth's surface and carbon dioxide is released by dying plants into the soil, the water and the carbon dioxide form a chemical reaction that turns the water into carbonic acid. Over time, the carbonic acid is seven at the rock and dissolves it, forming a cave passage. Mm. And um, is this the only way caves can be formed? No, some caves can be formed by lava. When a volcano erupts, and lava flows across the Earth's surface. The lava on the surface hardens, forming a solid roof, while the lava underground drains away, leaving an empty tube called a lava tube. So, is it a cave or a tube? It is a cave, but they call it a lava tube. Why? Because it looks like a tube. What about the pointy shaped rock in the caves? Spilliathons! Yes, spilliathons. Um, what are they and how are they formed? Spilliathons are mineral deposits or rock formations that decorate most caves. They can hang down from the ceiling, sprout up from the ground, or cover the sides of the cave. The dripping water dissolves the rock into these pointy things, just like icicles melting. And how long does it, uh, how fast do spelliathons grow? They grow very slowly. Spelliathons grow only one inch every 100 years. 100 years for one inch? Yes. Okay. 
And in that case, how long does it take a cave to grow big enough to fit a human? More than 100,000 years. 100 what? 100,000. 100,000 years to fit one person. So these, these caves that are around must be ancient, right? Yes, very, very ancient. And where can we find caves? Caves can be found underground, underwater, in sea cliffs, in hillsides, or in mountains. Most caves are formed in rocks that can dissolve more easily, like limestone, marble, dolomite, and gypsum. There are many different types of rocks around, right? Yes. I thought there was only one type of rock. No. <laughs> okay. And very good. Very good, Rayon. Tell me now, how much did Earth change since its beginning? And how much time did it take to change? Since its beginning, Earth has changed drastically. Most of the changes such as those caused by weathering and erosion usually happen slowly over an extremely long time. Canyons and caves are usually created by moving water, breaking up pieces of rock and moving them away. The shape of mountains and plateaus usually changes over time as wind breaks away and throws tiny particles of rock against them. Is Earth still changing? Yes. How do you know? It always looks the same. It might look the same every day to us, but the Earth continues to change as it has since its beginning. Often we can't see the changes because they happen so slowly. However, there are some changes that we are able to see because they happen quickly. Such as volcanoes erupting, mudslides, and earthquakes. These changes are more evidence that the Earth is still changing because we see them as they happen. They can happen suddenly and can cause significant changes in the things of the land very quickly. <laughs> and what causes these quick changes to happen? These quick changes happen because Earth's outer air is constantly changing and shifting, kind of like bits of cereal floating on milk. The pieces of Earth's crust move and bump into other pieces. Sometimes we can even feel the Earth moving beneath us. When the land moves and sinks, we call it an earthquake. Earthquakes happen when two pieces of Earth's crust move and bump into other pieces. This can cause big changes in the way the Earth looks. <laughs> okay. And what else causes quick changes? Volcanoes. When a volcano erupts, hot melted rocks or lava float up and down from its center and down its end. When the lava grows, it forms new hard rock on the Earth's surface. That's quite an exciting thing and one we can observe. Very good, Ryan. Very good. Okay. What evidence can scientists use to learn about Earth's history? Scientists use fossils to learn about Earth's history. What are fossils? Fossils are evidence or clues that talks about living things from long ago. As animals died and debris covered them, some animal and plant shapes were perfectly preserved in stone. Neat. 
bones, insect imprints, even dinosaur bones, hiding into fossils. And for time, the fossils get burned underground or underwater by the constant changes happening on Earth. And um, how do scientists know what time period the fossil specimens which they find are from? Fossil pins help us pinpoint specific times in Earth's history. The more layers of rock and dirt they are buried under, the older they are. Fossils that aren't as old are found closer to the surface that we rock on, buried under fewer layers of dirt and rock. Scientists dig down through the layers of earth to find older and older fossil specimens. Different plant and animal specimens within the same layer of Earth would have lived during the same time period. Very good. And uh, what does fossil evidence help us understand? Fossil evidence leads to an understanding of the development of life on Earth. When we know the time period that plants and animals lived in, we get a better picture of what the Earth looked like at those times and how it has changed. And we learn about dinosaurs. <laughs> Do you like dinosaurs? Yes. Okay. Now tell me, what else can scientists figure out by observing fossils? Scientists can figure out a lot about ancient plants and animals from long ago by observing their fossils. They can figure out their shape and size and where they would have lived and even what they ate. Like animals today, animals in the past ate meat or plants or both. One way to tell what kind of food animals ate is to look at their teeth. Sharp teeth are good for tearing meat. Flat teeth are good for grinding plants. When scientists find a fossil, then compare it to animals and plants from today. Examples? For example, when looking at the fossil of a trilobite, we can tell that it had a hard outer body, just like a crab or a lobster today. And the fossil of a fern looks just like the ferns of today. This tells us that they haven't changed throughout in all these years. Very good, Rayon. Great. Good job. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Now tell me, did you enjoy your lesson? Yes. And did you enjoy reading all these books on Epic? Yes. And do you want to read more? Yes. <laughs> and did you enjoy making your mountain with the cave? Yes. <laughs> do you want to try making some more fossils? Yes. Not real, right? Mm. Then, are you shy? Are you shy? No. Don't be shy, it's okay. You did a very good job. You want to say something? I don't have anything I want to say. <laughs> okay. You, uh... Is there a favorite ancient animal that you liked from the ones that you learned about? Yes. Do you have a favorite? Mm. Or did you like all of them? I liked all of them. Yeah? Okay. And was the lesson interesting? Yes. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. I love you. I love you too.